Well, thank you for coming on this beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, it, this is a, a historic day for Reading. Uh, uh, as, uh, um, as you all know, uh, uh, um, uh, these charging, ta uh, charging stations have been years in the making, uh, and, and, and it's so exciting to, to see uh, uh, all of them uh, uh, officially uh, operational. Um, so on behalf of, of the town of Reading, uh, I welcome you to the, uh, this event, and, and, and thank you uh, uh, for um, for joining us. Um, charging stations are, are an added amenity and are expected to attract more customers to Reading businesses. People come from outside of Reading to enjoy the state-of-the-art library and we expect this charging station to be yet another amenity this beautiful building has to offer. This public charging station is one of three brand new level two electrical vehicle charging stations in Reading. In addition to this library location, the two other chargers are located at the parking lot on Main and Haven Streets and on Lincoln Street by the commuter rail station. These uh, public uh, charging stations were partially funded through the Massachusetts Electrical Vehicle Incentive Program Public Access Charging Grant, which was secured by the Reading Municipal Light Department and, and, and Colleen O'Brien in particular. RMLD contributed additional funding to make these uh, charging stations possible. And RMLD will operate and maintain these charging stations for the benefit of customers, the town, our residents, and our visitors. Thank you to RMLD for all your efforts in, in, in bringing these stations to the town. Uh, next up, I would like to, to uh, uh, welcome uh, our interim general manager, Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right. So obviously we're pretty excited about these chargers. As, as Fidel mentioned, these are the first three public chargers that we're installing in uh, in Reading. Um, you guys know RMLD serves um, three other municipalities: Linfield, North Reading, and Wilmington. And uh, as Fidel mentioned, we have two already installed in uh, Wilmington, and uh, we're in the process of doing the, uh, the charging stations as well in North Reading and as well as in Linfield. Um, right behind me, uh, to my left, is a, is a pad for, in addition to the level two, there'll be a DC fast charger. Uh, DC fast chargers charge a little bit more quickly, well, rapidly more quickly than level twos. And part of the goal here is, is to uh, both learn uh, with the community in terms of uh, how to use these, how to manage them, how the customers use them. And the, uh, the second element basically is to uh, drive the um, electrification. So as you guys know from the Massachusetts Climate Bill of 2021, electrification affects transportation as well as buildings uh, and as well as lighting, etc. So this is the beginning, right? Um, you guys probably all realize, or should be, just so you know, about 80% of the charging typically happens at residences, at home overnight typically. Um, but the public stations are to make it more convenient for, uh, for people who are running errands, driving around, and visitors that come to uh, to Reading, and then Fidel mentioned it's part of the amenities. A lot of work went into the selection of these sites. There's more sites to be chosen, um, so it's a common combination of effort with the uh, the team at the town, town of Reading, as well as the RMLD team as well. So a lot of cooperation and teamwork to get this done. Um, at the end of the day, we're very excited, and again, the goal is to drive public awareness, but also provide convenience and to accelerate the adoption of EVs in our town. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and technology, thanks to the town and to the RMLD. Yay! 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 Marvelous, thank you. Right. Uh, okay. Did you yeah. So we're going to basically a simple demonstration of how easy it is um, to charge an electric vehicle with, uh, in this particular case, a charge point level two charging stations. Um, you can e either use a credit card, or in this case, you can use an app. So I'm just using a mobile app on my phone. Um, it's going to recognize my face. That's when I recognize my face. Okay. Then we hold it near the reader. It's authorizing. I'll let you.
goes. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when it's done, pay upon the application. Yeah, go ahead. It'll tell you what it's charging, so it'll display on the screen. It'll also alert you on the app. And when it's done, it'll send you a text to say you are fully charged or whatever charge level you want to go to. Really pretty straightforward. Same basic thing at home, except you don't need your credit card at home. Same basic adapter. Just pull it into your driveway or into your garage. Plug it in. We'll go in for the night. The, the nice thing with, with RMLD, I have the off-peak rate. So you can set in your car when you want to charge. Yep. So it charges after 7 p.m. And you get home and you plug it in. So your gas tank's always full. I don't notice the difference on my electric bill. Yeah. Is it uh, five bucks a gallon? Yeah. No. <laughs> I still have my five dollars. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, there's a there's a bunch of apps, but you can go to uh, EIA.gov app, and it'll let you do comparisons of you know basically what kind of car you're driving, your current car, an electric vehicle, um, local gas prices, and local electric prices, and it'll do a quick calculation of what you'll save. Um, but typically, you're in the range of Depending upon your driving patterns, but versus gas, particularly today, you'll be spending 25% to 50% of what you would normally spend. So, my experience is I'm closer to the 25 25% of what I used to spend with my gas vehicle. It's significant, it's not trivial. And, and one of the advantages of having public charges is a lot of places you go. I went to visit a friend of mine in Vermont. Well, he doesn't have a charge station at his house, so you have to drive five miles away and go inside and have a bite to eat or a beer or something and then you don't want to have too many beers. <laughs> um, but it's but having a lot of different places, you know, when you come to the library, you're going to be here for maybe an hour or so, you can pop off. Or if people in the neighborhood have friends that uh, that are visiting, they can come over and pop off. So it's really a big advantage of the community. Public charging stations are part of the whole network, and that's part of the reason why we're getting this started now. Again, most of it's done at home, but having them in the community um, is going to be an important thing, and we're going to learn together. Awesome. Hello. Can a Tesla charge here? Yes, Tesla can charge on charge points as well. So the opposite is hard. Going to Tesla charge. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tesla, Tesla superchargers can't charge in most places. Typically. It's just an adapter that counts. But it's it's all very digital in today's world. Yeah. It's very digital. Other questions? Thoughts? Reactions? Yay! We're excited. <laughs> Woo! Amy, hey, congratulations! Woo! <laughs> and, and I'll give my plug for electric vehicles. You know, everyone says, well, you know, you're not really saving any pollution because you still need oil and gas and coal to generate electricity. Number one, if you know anything about motors, electric motors are a lot more efficient than, than internal combustion motors. Number two is um, you've got, um, you can control the pollution at that point where the, where the electricity is being generated as opposed to, you know, all these cars driving around just spreading it around. So, so there's a huge environmental um, advantage to having electric vehicles on the road. That's a good point. And you get more charged the longer you talk. You don't have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> One correct account. So uh, how you doing? I want them felt it. And how much you spend on oil changes these days? Question. Yeah. You know, the Ford still sends me coupons for oil changes. <laughs> The, the humor is, there's no oil changes. I mean, literally, very little, very little maintenance. So wiper blades and cabin air filters. Yeah. If you look, if you look at the tires. manual, it's literally those two items, and then rotate the tires. I mean, literally, <laughs> that's what it is. So there's a lot of benefits. Not perfect, but pretty good. And what happens if the uh, passenger, uh, the car gets stranded? Is AAA equipped? Uh, how do you? Bring back the life of the dead car. So basically, Ford has a, a number you call, and they'll come out and tow you to a charge station. Um, part of the problem is a lot of the tow truck places don't know how to tow electric vehicles. Oh. So they might
might not attack right. So, so there's a, there's kind of a learning curve for owners, but um, it's, uh, uh, everybody's figuring it all out. You know, the more cars get sold, and I think if you tried to buy an electric vehicle today, you're probably waiting six months because yeah. they're, they're really that popular. I'm sure you get plenty of warnings when you get at a certain price. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just, the car's right. like, would you like me to yeah. help you? Right. So that points. It, it, so the screen is very digital screen. Right. It'll say, you know, here's the closest one. Right. The other thing is, we are um, starting to talk to a, a company that's interested in basically having um, mobile batteries to basically be the equivalent of AAA for batteries. Right. So that there's again, somebody's entrepreneurial and looking at that, and so we're entertaining how that might, how we might be able to help them. And they would basically charge off peak in the nighttime, and then they'd run around and. Jump starts, you know, jump starts, but you know, short charges. So, Does it damage the battery at all if you go dead? If you did it over and over again, it probably would, but if you just do it on occasion, it's just like they recommend you don't charge to 100% on a regular basis. Um, so, I set it with when I plug in at home, I set it to charge to 80%. Okay. But if I want to go somewhere, I hit a button and it goes to 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Congratulations to the team. Team effort. You know, I, I'll, I'll say, uh, also, I was director of public works in another Massachusetts town, and right after I left, they're starting to, to electrify the fleet there because now you can get pickup trucks that are electric. And, and what do you see with town trucks? They're idling a lot. They're sitting around idling a lot. They're using a lot of diesel fuel. Um, so. You know, the town has the infrastructure now to, to start doing that and really uh, help the community. Do it. It's a plus for us. Do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't prompt that. I really didn't. <laughs> All right, Mark. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you. Blessing we did.